Okay, yeah, to start with and to motivate this work, just uh, let me ask you a question. Can you rate these hotel recommendations, please? Are they fitting your preferences? Yes, maybe they are. Then please select one and tell me how satisfied you are with your choice. What a stupid question you might say now. Um, how should I rate these hotel recommendations without having been in these hotels, right? Um, well, this is actually the same as the situation of participants in many user studies we conduct in recommender systems research, um, where it is often not possible for participants to consume the recommended items, which are instead only represented by textual descriptions, pictures, metadata, and so on. Despite that, we as researchers uh, very often use questionnaires in order to assess how participants, for instance, perceive the recommendation quality um, and aspects related to user experience, such as satisfaction with the chosen item. Which led us to the question, what actually is the impact of item consumption in these user studies? Are there, for instance, differences in how users assess recommendation quality and user experience when they just see a standard movie recommendation or when they have actually watched the movie to the end. Moreover, are there domain-specific differences that determine whether users can um, adequately assess the value of these recommendations without experiencing the items? For instance, it might be much more difficult for participants to judge the quality of songs compared to movies where we often have uh, much more additional content information available. Um, there is a little bit of related work, especially in the area of explanations. However, in these studies, item consumption was mostly only approximated, and no one ever investigated just the single influence of item consumption. So we became interested in addressing exactly this question and came up with the following study design with two conditions, where in both conditions we started with eliciting the user's preferences to generate personalized recommendations. And after these initial steps, um, in condition one, we showed participants these recommendations in form of a typical list with some metadata, pictures, um, a description maybe, and so on. And then we asked them to assess these recommendations and the system via questionnaire. Next, we showed them the same recommendation list again, but now in an extended interface, where it was also possible to consume the recommended items. Afterwards, we asked them again to fill in the same questionnaire. In the other condition, we skipped the entire part with the standard recommendation list and immediately confronted participants with the extended consumption interface. Um, thus that we had only a post-consumption assessment in the second condition. This way, we were able to investigate both intra-individual differences, that means uh, when participants are asked to fill in a questionnaire pre-consumption and again later, after consumption, as well as between participants. Um, that means with this, uh, between subject design, we were able to um, compare the typical situation in user studies where participants have to assess the recommendations, the recommended items without consuming them, um, with situations where recommended items can actually be experienced um, before the uh, assessment takes place, so post-consumption. And we implemented this study design in two user studies, both with 40 participants, one with songs and one with movies, and used this small web application um, where participants in the movie uh, study in the first one could initially select some genres which we used to generate recommendations via the Spotify API and these recommendations were presented as you see here um, by covers, album and song titles and artist information and in the extended interface participants were then allowed to listen to each song and before they finally proceeded to the post-consumption assessment they were also asked to rate each of the individual recommendations. Uh, for the second study, the one with movies, everything was pretty much the same, except that uh, now, instead of songs, we used some short movies, um, which were recommended in a newspaper article and all available for free at YouTube. And also this time, as subjective description text from the newspaper article were available, we showed these articles in addition to the, um, to the recommendations. 
Now, now let's have a look at the results. And first at the rating for these individual recommendations. Um, you see here that uh, these ratings are normally distributed prior to consumption in condition one, which means that there are many three and four star ratings, but also several one, two, and five star ratings. After consumption, um, the distribution became bounded with lower variance, and recommendations were overall rated much higher after participants listened to the songs. Um, to some extent, this also applies to this other condition um, where participants hadn't been confronted with the recommended items before. Um, the picture is pretty much different for the second study for movies where the rating distribution was more or less equal regardless of whether participants watched these movies before. And we can observe the same effects when we look at the statistical analysis of these results and of the questionnaire results. Uh, for this, we used linear mixed effect models uh, for each dependent variable, which we measured by means of items from several um, uh, established recommender systems questionnaires, uh, which allowed us to investigate differences both within subject, that means between condition one pre and condition one post, and between subjects, which means condition one pre versus condition two post. Um, now, I don't want to go into too much detail here, but let me show you whether we found significant differences. Um, here in this table, which is for the music study, uh, each uh, green table cell indicates a significantly better rating after the consumption. And as we already have seen in the chart, um, uh, the mean recommendation rating was higher after consumption, at least in the within comparison. But we found many, many more differences. Um, with respect to choice satisfaction and difficulty, with respect to the effectiveness of the system, and also, um, as expected, the provided information appeared much more sufficient when participants could listen to the songs. But they were also more confident with their decisions, um, had less doubts when judging the recommendations, and were overall significantly more satisfied after listening. Um, the importance of item consumption and of listening to the songs was also reflected in the qualitative comments participants gave us. For instance, they wrote that um, artist or album title are not meaningful and that only listening allowed imagining how well a song fits their own taste. Here's the same table for the movie domain. And in case you think I have to uncover something on this slide, no, that's not the case. There simply weren't any differences. Almost all the results we got before participants consumed the movies, watched them, were similar to the results we obtained afterwards. And the qualitative comments draw the same picture. Um, they said, for instance, the watching experience met my expectations. Um, the descriptions allowed me to get a pretty good impression. And that there was no reason to change the movie's rating after watching it. One participant wrote exactly down this. But no one wrote down such things with respect to the song recommendations um, in study one, which already brings me to the conclusion that um, yeah, it appears that domain as well as the type and amount of provided information largely influence whether actual experiencing a product can be substituted. In some cases, especially when confronted with rather abstract emotional content such as songs, mm, it appears that participants cannot adequately assess all aspects of a recommender system in particular those related to user experience, without consuming the items. On the other hand, when we have high quality textual descriptions, as maybe for movies, and when they are available, it seems to be, uh, participants seem to be able to um, approximate the value of recommendations reasonably well. So I think um, we should always take questionnaire results with a grain of salt. And when conducting user studies in the future, I suggest to very carefully think about giving participants the possibility to consume the recommended items, because this may influence your results. However, um, our study results also show that um, questionnaire results seem to provide at least a lower bound, which is particularly relieving for um, yeah, domains, as in my hotel example from the beginning, where maybe item consumption isn't an option uh, during a user study. Yeah, and with this positive takeaway, I would like to thank you and uh, yeah, look forward to your questions. Thank you for the nice talk. Any questions? Yeah, right next to me. Okay. Great talk, Benedict. Uh, so, my name is, I'm here. 
My name is Martijn Willemsen. Um, to what extent did people know the songs in, in the, the song condition? Because some of this looks like all the work we had where we saw that if people know the songs and they mm -hmm. go from memory, they're more like rating in, on the average if it's long ago. Mm -hmm. And then with the consume, of course, they think, oh, yeah, this was a great song, and then they rate higher. Yeah, um, yeah, we uh, good question. We controlled this. And um, in addition to let uh, participants rate each of the individual recommendations, we also asked them to indicate whether they knew the songs. And it was for both studies the case that um, songs, were, songs and movies were only loaned to a very low extent. Yeah. Sorry, m me again uh, from Spotify, so that's why I'm interested. Uh, one other thing that maybe caused some of the result is it's easy to kind of decide quickly for a song, it's short. Well, if you're going to spend an hour watching something, you may take kind of more time before you decide. So I don't know how this impacted some of, I know it's about the domain, but it's, it's a particular thing. Okay, you do a song, you listen, you, you lost three minutes of your life if you hate it. While with a film, it's a bit different. And people often, if they don't like the film, they will still continue watching it as, as a kind of, okay, well, I, I, I chose it. So I don't know how this would have eventually impacted that, mm -hmm. which yeah. is different to the domain. It's just the waste, how much waste of your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's also a good, good remark. Um, I have to say that we only used short movies, which means that they were about 10 minutes uh, and uh, participants had to watch three of them. So um, it took uh, at most uh, 30 minutes for them to go through all the recommendations. Um, yeah, but still, for sure, um, the, the time they spent um, looking at the recommendations, consuming the items, could have influenced the results, um, uh, but uh, yeah, the the interesting part is I think that um, for from yeah it is domain dependent and for for music which is rather short um, there we found many many differences and for the other domain for movies there weren't any differences so I think although that might be an, an confounding factor maybe I think um, yeah these these results show that. Um, that uh, yeah, participants cannot always approximate item consumption pretty well. So yeah. let's thank the speaker again and close the session. Thank all, thank all the speakers. Thank you.